Most people think the hardest part of intermittent fasting is the hunger. But the truth is far more interesting. In the first few hours when you start skipping your usual meals, your body isn't panicking, it's testing you. It senses the drop in quick glucose. Insulin begins to fall and a quiet shift starts deep inside. You may feel a little restless, maybe a bit irritable, like something is off. But that discomfort isn't a warning sign. It's your metabolism waking up for the first time in years. Think of it like a powerful engine that hasn't been asked to do real work in a long time. The moment you stop feeding it non-stop, it begins searching, recalibrating, preparing for a major upgrade. And that uncomfortable edge you feel, that's the doorway. The moment where your the body whispers, begins. are we really doing this? What happens after that whisper is, the is where the real the transformation hours. begins. During those first six hours, your body is doing something most people never realize. It's not shutting down. It's not weakening. It's actually surveying the situation, trying to understand whether this pause in eating is just a delay or the beginning of a new rhythm. As blood sugar dips and insulin continues to decline, your cells begin knocking on old energy doors, By hour checking four, for leftover Mary glucose, scanning your bloodstream for the next wrong. move. This is why you might feel east. slightly unfocused or a little moody. Your system is shifting gears, and just like any machine that changes direction, there's a brief moment of friction. But nothing is wrong. This is your metabolism warming up. And the people often underestimate it, it because it feels so subtle. And begins One of my favorite examples is Mary, a viewer switch. who told me she almost quit fasting at hour four because she thought something was wrong. But by hour six, the fog eased and she realized her body wasn't struggling. It was adjusting. And that adjustment is the first true step forward. Somewhere between Ooh. hours 6 and 12, something almost invisible but incredibly important begins Ketones, to happen. Premium fuel. As the last trace of stored glucose fade, your body quietly shifts its strategy. It stops relying on the quick energy it's been spoiled with for years and starts unlocking the deeper storage it was designed to use in times of scarcity. Scientists call this moment the metabolic switch, but you'll feel it in much simpler ways, a light wave of hunger, a slight dip in energy, maybe a soft urging from your stomach. Nothing dramatic, nothing dangerous. Just your body saying, all right, if food isn't coming, let's switch to plan B. And plan B is fat. That's the beauty of this phase your body begins tapping into the reserves you've carried for so long. It's efficient, elegant, and extremely human. Mary told me that at hour nine, she expected to feel worse, but instead, she felt something new, a quiet steadiness, like her system had stopped fighting. That calm shift means the switch has flipped and the journey is officially underway. By the time you reach the 12-hour mark, something remarkable begins to unfold beneath the surface. With glucose nearly gone and the metabolic switch fully engaged, your liver starts producing ketones, tiny molecules crafted from fat that act like premium fuel for your brain. And the moment ketones rise, you often feel it before you understand it. A subtle lift, a quiet sharpening. It's not caffeine. It's not adrenaline, it's clarity, the kind that comes from steady, clean energy instead of the roller coaster spikes you get from sugar. Many people describe it as that moment when the mental fog finally clears, when thoughts line up instead of crashing into each other. Tom, a business owner who first tried fasting during a chaotic work week, told me he expected to feel drained by hour 12. Instead, he found himself speaking more clearly in meetings, thinking faster, reacting smarter. That's what ketones do. They don't hype you up. They refine you. 
And once your brain gets a taste of that clarity, it starts craving the stability that comes with it. As you move deeper into the fast 16, 18, even 20 hours in your body steps fully into the state it was built for. With ketones rising and glucose long behind you, your metabolism becomes almost elegant in the way it works. This is when your mitochondria, the tiny power generators inside every cell, start operating with a kind of precision most people never experience in their normal eating patterns. They burn fat cleanly, steadily, without the crashes that come from processed carbs or constant snacking. And the energy you feel now, it isn't frantic or jittery. It's controlled. It's stable. It's the kind of energy our ancestors relied on when they needed to stay sharp enough to hunt, navigate, and survive. One viewer, James, once told me that at hour 19, he felt something he hadn't felt in years. His mind wasn't racing. His cravings went quiet, and for the first time, he understood what steady energy really meant. This phase isn't about pushing through hunger. It's about discovering a rhythm your body has known for thousands of years. A rhythm it's finally remembering. Somewhere between 18 and 24 hours, your body unlocks one of its most extraordinary abilities, an ability most people never experience, because they never give their system enough quiet to activate it. This is the moment autophagy begins. The word sounds intense, almost dramatic, but what it really means is self-renewal. Your cells start inspecting themselves, finding damaged proteins, misfolded structures, and worn out components, and then recycling them into something stronger. Imagine a skilled cleanup crew arriving after years of clutter, sorting, repairing, rebuilding. That's what's happening inside you right now. And while you might not feel this transformation physically, the long-term impact is profound. Lower inflammation, better cellular Nhưng performance, thật, reduce risk of chronic disease. So this is your body protecting you in ways you can't see but will absolutely benefit from. When Dr. Yoshinori Osumi won the Nobel Prize in 2016 for revealing how autophagy works, it wasn't because the process was rare. It was because it was powerful. And you're experiencing it every minute you stay in this window. As your fast deepens, the transformation doesn't stop at your cells. It reaches all the way down to your genes. When nutrient levels stay low for long enough, your DNA receives what scientists call a hormetic signal, a gentle form of stress that doesn't harm you but upgrades you. It turns on a family of longevity begins. genes known as sirtuins and activates AMPK, the, the master body is regulator the of cellular during the first energy. Six hours. Think of it as flipping a switch inside your biology that says protect, repair, strengthen. Instead of slowing down, your body becomes more efficient, more deliberate, more resilient. <sighs> This is the same principle behind exercise or cold exposure, small control challenge that make the system stronger. And fasting is one of the most natural versions of that challenge. With sirtuins active, your By cells begin four, creating Mary new mitochondria, she literally was building fresh energy the factories. East. The result is a metabolism that behaves younger than your age and a body that recovers faster than it did before. You're not starving. You're signaling your biology to rise to its potential. One of the biggest the fears people have about fasting is the idea that the body will start breaking down muscle the moment the food disappears. Switched. But that's not how human biology works. Fasting is controlled. Starvation is chaos. During a fast, your hormones shift strategically. Insulin drops, human growth, hormone rises, and your body becomes smarter about preserving what matters. Instead of tearing down muscle, it uses Ketone, stored fat for fuel, fuel 
and recycles old or damaged proteins through autophagy. Studies from the National Institutes of Health show that short-term fasting doesn't significantly reduce lean mass, especially when you eat enough protein during your eating window. Think of it this way. Your body isn't trying to punish you. It's trying to protect you. The real breakdown only happens when all reserves are gone, a state that fasting never pushes you into. This isn't destruction. It's refinement. As your fast continues, the changes in your brain become even more noticeable. Without the constant spikes and crashes of blood sugar, your mind finally steps off the emotional roller coaster it's been riding for years. Neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine begin to flow in steadier patterns and your prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain responsible for decision-making and self-control, starts to take the lead again. Many people describe this phase as entering a flow state where thoughts feel organized, emotions feel lighter, and reacting to stress feels less automatic. You're not wired tight anymore. You're steady. One viewer told me that during her first extended fast, she felt a calm she hadn't experienced since childhood, like someone had finally lowered the background noise in her mind. This isn't deprivation, it's recalibration. Your brain is rediscovering what it feels like to operate without constant interruption. While your mind grows clearer, something equally important is happening deeper in your body. Your gut is finally getting a chance to rest. Without food constantly moving through your system, the lining of your intestines begins to repair microscopic wear and tear that builds up over years of nonstop eating. In this quiet window, beneficial microbes like Ackermansia mucinifera start to flourish, strengthening your gut barrier and improving how your body absorbs nutrients. This isn't just digestion, it's immunity mood and energy wrapped into one ecosystem. Many fasters report feeling lighter, less bloated, even more emotionally balanced. And it's no coincidence. When your gut finds stability, your whole body follows. And as the gut-brain axis strengthens, you start to realize that fasting isn't only changing how your body works, it's changing how you feel from the inside out. Fasting can be a powerful tool for women, but it also requires a bit more sensitivity. Female hormones, especially estrogen and progesterone, respond quickly to changes in energy availability, which means pushing too hard too fast can sometimes elevate cortisol and disrupt your natural rhythm. That's why many experts suggest starting with a gentler window like 1410 instead of jumping straight into 168. It's not about doing less. It's about doing what aligns with your biology. When approached mindfully, women often experience smoother energy, fewer cravings, reduced PMS symptoms, and better metabolic balance. Fasting shouldn't fight your hormones, it should harmonize with them. And that harmony begins with listening to your body, not forcing it. After 30 days of consistent intermittent fasting, something shifts not just on the outside, but in the deepest layers of who you are. Your energy stops rising and crashing and instead moves in a smooth, steady line. Your sleep becomes deeper. Your skin looks clearer. Inflammation markers fall. Your metabolism becomes more flexible. Your cravings quiet down and your relationship with food becomes intentional rather than automatic. And then there's the psychological change, the one no lab test can measure. You begin to feel in control again. The noise that used to come from constant hunger and habit starts to fade. You stop eating because you're bored. You stop snacking because it's time. You start listening to your body, to your mind, to the signals you once ignored. And somewhere along the way, you realize 
food never controlled you. You controlled you. Intermittent fasting doesn't just reshape your body. It reshapes your identity, revealing a steadier, clearer, more powerful version of yourself—one that was always there, waiting for the noise to quiet down.